worldview was the next concept to grasp. And this really is what most people suffer from. Uh, a poisoned worldview, as I'll talk about in part two. See, our, it, it's just what it says. It's our view of the world. How we view ourselves in relation to the world, how we view others in relation to ourselves. So, just like the polar energy forces that we talked about in polarity, there's a positive worldview, and then there's a negative worldview. So the positive worldview is one that sees ourselves as, yes, an individual, unique expression of individuality, the monad of consciousness, if you will, the individual unit. But it recognizes that we are unique, and we're an expression of the whole, and we're part of the whole. When that drop is in the whole ocean, there's no separation. It is the same consciousness, it is the same energy, it is the same substance, it's made of the same thing. And we need to see the world more in that holistic sense if we're going to come through these problems that we're facing, that we see in the external world. It's because we see ourselves as fundamentally separate from everyone else. See, it doesn't mean we have to lose our uniqueness. We can still understand that we're completely unique, like a beautiful snowflake, and there's only one like that. You know, it's not to throw away the idea of individuality, because that is of total importance. That is of critical import to understand that each individual is a unique expression of consciousness within the whole. So the, the value of the individual is infinite, and it must be respected at all times. But it's not to say that the individual shouldn't also understand that they are part of a living system. See. We belong to the whole system of the earth, the whole complex that is this living, breathing planet. We can't separate ourselves from our environment, from our ecosystem. We belong to it. We are part of it. And human nature, you know, th this is really what worldview really gets down to. How do we see human nature? Do we think of human nature as fundamentally flawed? Do we think of it as fundamentally evil or vile? You know, I think this is what human nature really looks like once all the uh, external uh, tapestries are stripped away and all the non-essentials are stripped away. Human nature is fundamentally good, not fundamentally evil or flawed. This, that's a poisoned worldview. We're, if we're to heal the problems within ourselves and in our, our social uh, structure, we need to uh, recognize human nature for what it is. It's good. It's all the conditioning and the mind control factors that go into poisoning a person through information that they take in over the course of their lives that, that makes them do the things that they do, the harmful things that they do. It isn't that that's human nature. And uh, we need to really be focused on working toward true freedom if, if our worldview is a positive one. And if we really understand what we're here to do and what, um, uh, what a positive worldview is really seeking to, to create, to accomplish. When we take this worldview, this positive, connected worldview, this unified, non-dual worldview, these are the states that emerge. Higher levels of consciousness and awareness. Dominion within the self. Understanding of our motivations, our desires. And, and states like this is what emerges, what you see here. Peace, harmony, justice, truth, freedom, order. They can only be created with a positive worldview. The opposite Worldview is a negative or a dark worldview, a poisoned worldview, as I call it. So it's the worldview that you know sees that again, that little drop up there, as completely cut off and separate from the whole. Uh, this is one big, huge mass of consciousness, but I'm completely separate from it, and I have no relationship to that whole. You know, I'm just a number. 
I'm, I'm a, one of the faces in a, ma a mass of faces, and I can't really affect any change. I'm just a number. I'm powerless. Uh, my, my nature is fundamentally flawed. We come into the world in a state of corruption and sin and, you know, brokenness. And you take this worldview, it, your life will become a reflection of that worldview. You will, your consciousness will slowly begin to shut down until you're in a state that resembles sleep or hypnosis. And you will have all kinds of susceptibility to techniques of mind control, which I'll be talking about. And when we take this negative worldview, then we want to lash out against everyone else. We're cut off. We're separate from everybody else. We're in a state of internal confusion because our consciousness is shut down. And then we want control. We want to feel better about ourselves by taking external control over someone else. And all that's doing is ignoring the basic problem. The basic problem that a controller does not know oneself. They don't really understand the modalities of consciousness that are indwelling within them. And because they're in that state of internal confusion, then they seek for external control over others. You're only going to create chaos, suffering, disorder, disharmony, and ultimately enslavement by looking at the world in that way. These are the states that a negative worldview brings into manifestation, a being that is shut down in fear, totally oppressed, or looking to oppress others, like a sorcerer or a big brother type.